Let's finally clear up the confusion about fixed width, hug contents and fill container. Especially for beginners in Figma, these might get confusing. So in this video, let's go over what each of these means and when you should use them. So these three setups are specific to auto layout. So this means that if you want to use these, you either have to use them on auto layout child elements, which are elements that are contained within an auto layout, or auto layout parents, which means auto layout objects that have objects inside of them. So right now here we have object one and two. These are auto layout child elements and the auto layout layer, which is the auto layout parent element, right? So these three settings basically determine how these objects behave how these auto layout objects behave. You can use fixed width and hug contents on both child and parent elements of an auto layout, but fill container, you can use that only for auto layout child elements. And after we are done with this explanation, you will understand why that's the case. So fixed width. What does that mean? Here we have an auto layout object with two child elements, object one and two. And if I resize this auto layout, these objects inside of this auto layout stay, you know, the same width. So even though I'm changing the parent element, both of these are the same, right? So that means to have fixed width. So no matter what, what size the parent element is, these, when you set them to fixed width, and that's on horizontal resizing, right? You can also set them to fixed width on vertical resizing. These stay on whichever value you have set up. So in this case, that's 341 points. So that is fixed width. Fill container. So when you set fill container to child elements of an auto layout, which is exactly what we have done right here. This is fill and this is fill, fill container, right? If I resize the auto layout, the parent element, these are going to resize alongside with it. So that's fill container. And of course, this can go both horizontally and vertically. So if I resize it vertically, you can see that this one changes its height, whereas this one does not. That's because the height of this one is set to fill container and the height of this one is set to hug contents. So that is how you can combine these horizontally and vertically to get the result that you need. And since we mentioned hug contents, let's go finally, let's go over hug contents. So hug contents is basically when the size of an object is determined by what's inside of it. So if we set these objects to hug, they basically shrink as much as they can. And what does that mean as much as they can? Well, they are limited by the width of this element, right? Because this one is also set to hug contents, which is then, you know, again, limited by whatever text we have inside of this object. So when you set an object to hug contents, you shrink it as much as you can, basically. That's that's the main characteristic. So I guess you could say that with fill container, so you stretch an object as much as possible, and then with hug contents, you shrink it, right? So if you shrink these as much as possible, they are limited by what's inside, and if you stretch them as much as possible, they are limited by their parent element. Right? So if I remove one of these, you can see that this object one now stretches as much as it can to the whole width of the element. But if I go back and leave both of these at fill container, you can see both of these stretch as much as they can. And that is basically 50% and 50% width, right? So you can set hug contents up both for child elements and both for parent elements. So this object two, can be resized, you know, shrunk as much as possible, but the parent element as well. So right now we are at fixed, but when I change that to hug contents, you can see it again shrinks as much as it can. And when I resize this manually, it switches over back to fixed, right? So it doesn't really make any sense to specify a specific width by resizing and keeping it shrunk as much as possible. You know, that doesn't make any logical sense. So if you set this up to hub contents and then you resize this, it automatically gets switched over back to uh, fixed basically. So that's fixed width, fill container and hack contents. Now you can of course, if you're comfortable with all these and you understand how these work, you can then go on to like the next logical level which is when you kind of combine these functions 
and you basically have like multiple levels, right? So what does this mean? So if I have an auto layout right here, I can have one of the objects set to fixed, right? Let's leave this at fixed. And this one I can set to full container. So now what happens is this, when I resize the parent element, this one gets resized, but this one does not because we have specified a specific width that's gonna stay the same. So only this one is subject to change. It's basically being stretched as much as possible. And if we shrink this like all the way over here, if this needs to stay fixed and this is fixed as well, then stretching this as much as possible is basically just the space that remains, right? So you basically can think of it like fixed width being rigid objects, and fill container being basically flexible objects. So right now, I can also resize this vertically, right? And you can see that nothing happens to those two objects. That is because they are both set to hug. And if I wanted to change that, I can either set them to fixed, so I manually resize them to 166 in height, the second object, and now when I resize the parent element, you can see that again, this one stays shrunk and this one is, you know, stays at a specific width. I can also set this to fill container on height and this is gonna change the behavior, right? I can also set this one to fill container and then both of these are gonna stretch basically according to the width and the height, right? So I hope this is making sense so far. And as you can see right here, I have another object within the first object. This is a rectangle that has the horizontal resizing set to fill container because when I resize this parent element, this gets resized according to fill container, but then this rectangle, because there's also a fill container, is gonna get resized as well. So it kind of is cascading down the hierarchy where this is the first object getting resized and this is the second object getting resized, right? Logically, in, in the logical hierarchy. But I could also, you know, set this rectangle to fix. This means that this object is now gonna be resized, but this object is not gonna be resized. The final outcome is this, right? This one is fixed, this one is not. So when you're assembling together like UIs, it can get really confusing as to why things look broken, why you know stuff isn't happening as you need it to. So if you encounter such problems, which are very frequent, especially for beginners, make sure to inspect like your setup when it comes to fill container and hug contents. But on the other hand, if I were to set this one to hug contents, right? Hug, this is now gonna shrink as much as possible which is based on the fixed rectangle width. And then I can hug contents on this one as well, which is gonna then shrink again. And this one is now fixed, right? You can see how you can make them fixed in one direction and then flexible in another, right? So that's how you can go through multiple levels and how you can combine these to get the result that you need. Now let's take a look at an example. So here's an accordion from the Figma web design series on my channel. By the way, if you wanna learn how to design websites, go and watch this series. It's totally free and it's very detailed, right? So here I have a, an accordion and when I, sh when I resize this, you can see that it's responsive. Now, why is it responsive? Well, that is because I set this up to have a very specific structure using fill container, fixed width, and a combination of these and hug contents as well. Uh, let's examine, right? So you can see that within this component, I have the headline plus button auto layout, right? And within this auto layout that is set to fill container, by the way, so this means when I resize this whole element, this headline plus button auto layout is resizing alongside with it. Within this auto layout, I have this text object, which is again, fill container, again, fill container, and then this button which is fixed and fixed. And that's very much on purpose because I wanna keep this button the same size, right? So this needs to stay the same. That is something that is not on purpose be, being set up to be flexible as opposed to all these things. So when I, for example, take a look at this divider, this is also horizontally speaking set to fill container. This means resizing the object resizes this divider as well. I could set this up to fixed. So right now it's at fixed and this happens. 
right? This divider, you know, stays at one size, which is not really making this whole thing really responsive. It's awkwardly sticking out. So for this divider to comply with our responsiveness, we need to use fill container. And then same goes, of course, same goes for the text, which means that when I resize this, this changes as well. That's because I have set this up to fill container on the horizontal resizing, but however, hug contents on the vertical resizing. And why hug contents on the vertical resizing? Because as I resize this whole element, I want this text to adjust vertically as well. So when I shrink this, you know, this new lines of text need to be created, which means a taller object, text object. And then I want to adjust this whole thing, you know, this whole accordion according to the height of this object. So what happens as I resize is this object changes height. And then because this object changes height and because this whole thing is set to hug contents, this whole accordion is set to hug contents, the whole accordion changes height as well. Now let's let's kind of break this setup by setting this text object to in terms of height to fixed height. And what's gonna happen now is this. So the text object is changing its width because the width is set to fill container, but the height stays the same. So there is an overflow of text out of the text object because the text object is not allowed to adjust its height right? There's a fixed height, 63 points. And because this object is not allowed to change height, this object, this whole accordion is not changing height either because the hug contents is shrinking this as much as possible in terms of height. But since this text object is this height, there is no need, at least according to this setup, to extend this lower anymore, right? So the hug contents is always based on the size of the contents within the object, right? So if we select this text object and set it back to hug contents in terms of height, you can see how immediately the accordion adjusts its size and, you know, behaves as intended. And similar with this headline plus button auto layout, if I set this to fixed width, this happens again breaking the responsiveness but as soon as i turn this back to fill container it's getting fixed so remember fixed width simply keeps an object the same size fill container stretches it as much as possible according to the parent element just to specify some more parent element decides right so here the parent element decides the size hug contents it shrinks as much as possible. So here, child element decides, and therefore it's just basically based on the contents. So yeah, I hope this was useful. I hope this helped you understand fixed width, hug contents and fill container some more. I hope this cleared up any confusion about this. If it didn't, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. These features are extremely powerful when you're designing websites, UIs, and any responsive elements. As I said, if you want to learn how to design websites in Figma, go and check out my completely free course on my channel, a playlist with around 30 episodes right now that goes in full detail how you can design a website from scratch in Figma without any plugins, just starting with a blank canvas and working our way up to a polished website design. And of course, we are using a lot of fill containers, a lot of fixed widths and a lot of hack content. So thanks for tuning in. Again, hopefully this was useful. If it was, I would appreciate you leaving a like. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.